Hello my friends, for the past six months I've been working on a project, diligently smashing away at it, and I have finished it, super excited, and in this video I wanted to talk to you about tips for finishing your video game, and super exciting, I'm teamed up with Thomas Brush, who is a full-on indie right in the deep of creating his games, he's worked on Pinstripe, and he's in the process of finishing up Once Upon a Coma, you can find a link to his channel and his games below in the description, and he and I are going to give you six strategies, six secrets, for finishing your game. When it comes to games, you can get really distracted by, oh, wouldn't it be great if I had this, and wouldn't that feature be nice, and oh, I played this game, it had that thing, I wanna do this and this and that and that. Don't get distracted by adding features into your game. If you find that your game's not good enough yet, you're not digging it, people aren't enjoying it, they're giving you feedback that it needs to be better, whatever it might be, solve that problem with tuning, not with features. What do I mean by that? Well, say you've got a character that runs along and jumps and it's all kind of nice and cool and you've got enemies coming in. You might get there and say, hmm, I need a different ability. Maybe the maybe my, my character should fly. Yeah, that's it. And then flying, you're gonna have to implement a whole bunch of maybe different physics and you're gonna have to implement different rules for collision, different controls, tutorials for the player on how to do it. Maybe there's a lot of additional content that's gonna take your project, it's gonna drag it out and make it go longer. So rather than saying, I need flying, look to say, how can I make running, jumping, shooting, and enemies more engaging? What can I do in there? How can I make it faster or slower or, or create the same content but have it a different, uh, a different skin to it or a different flavor? Instead of shooting and having the enemies go back a little bit, they shoot sometimes and they explode off the screen. So those are things that you can do more quickly. You can do that in days rather than doing it in weeks. Because as you know, each feature is going to take you two weeks to a month, and it's going to drag everything out. So solve the problem with tuning rather than with features. Another secret for you to finish your game is to stay organized. I can't emphasize this enough. And the reason why you want to stay organized is because maybe things are really easy starting out. You're really passionate, you're just throwing stuff together, you're excited about your game. It doesn't matter what things look like, just as long as when you play your game you're excited about it, it's fun, and it's coming together. But what happens is a year down the road, when you're still working on this game, and you probably resent it by now, you're looking at the folder structure. Everything is thrown hap hap what's the word? haphazardly about. Everything is crazy. The naming conventions don't make sense. Some things are lowercase, some things are uppercase, some things are spaced out, some things are underscored. Your tabs and indents and your files and your scripts are all messed up. Nothing makes sense. You're much more likely to quit because it's so overwhelming. Imagine um, a dirty car, right? You have this car and it runs okay. It's an old car, it doesn't look great, and it's dirty and there's trash in it, there's McDonald's bags and wrappers, there's goo, some kind of goo is on the steering wheel, and dust everywhere, and you drive up to a dealership and there's a nice shiny car right next to you. It's not that different, but it's shiny and clean, right? You're much more likely to be willing to trade in your old crappy car and take on a tremendous amount of debt to get this new car. When you have a game that you're working on and it's a mess, you're much more likely and going to be willing to give it up and just take on a brand new project. With all the weight of a new project, you'd rather take that on than keep working on the current game. So keep your game clean, keep the folders clean, and I would recommend keeping your office space clean as well. If everything is clean, if everything is in place and you have a system in place, you can deal with the stress and the anxiety because I promise it's gonna come. You're gonna feel anxious, you're gonna be feel stressed about your game. So ensure that you have everything cleaned up so that there's only one focal point of stress. And that focal point is actually finishing the game, not cleaning up stuff that you've already made. One of the greatest things I've found for people I've coached and for myself is to have an accountability buddy. What does that mean? Well, it's someone that's a friend of yours or someone you know from one of the communities that you're in that's up to something in their life, doesn't have to be the same as you, where you can have a weekly conversation. You can do it more, you can do it less if that works for you, but I recommend weekly, where you get there and say, okay, buddy, this week I am doing one, two, three. I'm promising to get those things done and the other person does the same. Now I wanna say, be really, really clear in here that your accountability buddy, could be a friend you went to school with, could be your best mate, could be your brother or sister, whoever it is, they don't have to set the same commitments. They don't have to be taking on something huge like you. They don't have to be finishing a game, but you wanna make sure they have something so they participate. But in terms of what you do, you're committing something to them. And to make this work, here's the clincher, here's the thing. To make this actually work, you have to have some sort of outcome if you don't keep your commitment. What do I mean by that? Well, 
I've had accountability buddies where we've said, here is $100. If I don't do what I said I was gonna do, I want you to take my $100 and go out and just waste it on whatever you want. Go buy yourself something, go on a, an eating and drinking spree. And the thought of my friend going and having a good time with my money, ugh, I didn't like that at all. So that's a commitment. I've also had other people that I've worked with and their commitments have been along the lines of, okay, if I don't get my thing done, I will come to your place and I will clean your hockey gear. Talking about ice hockey, I don't know if you've played ice hockey. I played ice hockey for a few years. The gear stinks, it's just it's gross stuff. It's sweaty and anyway, so it's cleaning someone else's hockey gear, disgusting. Someone else I know uh, had the whole, well, I'll come to your house and clean your entire bathroom with my toothbrush. So these are the things, you don't actually want to have to do this punishment. You want to have that as a fun game that you're playing, but also something meaningful that says, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus on this here. I've got a reason to do my work. So accountability buddy, weekly meetings, make sure you commit to something each week. This is what I'll do. Make sure you hold the other person accountable with having some sort of outcome if either of you don't do the thing that you promised to do. All right, one of the most important ways for you to actually finish your game is something called visualization. So visualization really for me is, is sitting down in the quiet, sitting maybe in a closet or in my bedroom, nice and quiet, turn out the lights, close my eyes, and really think, almost daydream, about what you want to achieve. What is it that you're going to work your butt off for? What is it you're going to finish? So here's an example of visualization. So at the end of 2019, for me, I want to have released my game Once Upon a Coma, which I'm working on right now. I'd like to have released that game um, on Nintendo Switch and Steam. Those are the most important platforms for me. I also want to release on Xbox and PS4 if I can. Um, I want that game to make a million dollars. And this actually is an achievable goal for me because I'm trying to triple what my previous games have made. I want to make a million dollars, at least gross. Um, I want to spend that money on making another game, um, building up uh, my studio, maybe hiring some remote workers to help me with the day-to-day -day tasks. I want to spend some of that money maybe paying off a house, um, spend some of that money paying off some debt. Maybe you have some school debt or maybe you have some car payments or something like that, credit card payments that you want to pay off. Really visualize the specific things maybe you want to pay off with money earned from your game. But... I would recommend that you don't make it only financial. What are some social reasons you want to finish your game? So for example, um, maybe visualize calling up your dad and saying, Dad, I just want to let you know that I released my game on Nintendo Switch. I'd love for you to check it out. Or maybe you want to share it with your, your close group of friends. Maybe you've uh, been someone who seems to always quit things, maybe lets people down a lot. Maybe you want to prove them wrong. Maybe at the end of 2019 or whatever year you're watching this video and uh, realize that you want to actually prove someone wrong. That's a way to visualize. Imagining pulling out the Nintendo Switch or whatever platform you have and showing your friends and saying, look at this. Look at this game I made. Um, and seeing in their face like that they're impressed and that maybe they even respect you. This is visualization. And the reason why it is crucial is because basically what you're doing is you're manifesting the future into the palm of your hand. You're almost tangibly creating the future. And what I mean there is it's almost as real to you as this video is, as your computer or your phone that you're looking at right now is. When you think and dream up something that's so tangible, so real, I'm talking about specifics. Close your eyes and think about all of the specifics. Where are you? What is it? What's the season? How do you feel? What's your surroundings? Basically, you're manifesting your future. The reason why this is important is because it's really hard to let go <clears throat> of that future in your hands, of that diamond that you've suddenly created with your mind. It's really hard to let that go. And so that means that you're much less likely to quit your game and more likely to finish it because you've tasted it. You've, you've tasted a little bit of what the future can be for you. One of the big things for me is distractions in my life. I'm sure you have distractions. Distractions when you sit down to work, distractions when you're walking around, distractions that pop into your mind. Distractions are the things that make us procrastinate. Distractions are the things that say, hmm, wouldn't it be more fun to watch Netflix than to work on your game? Oh, wouldn't it be better to uh, do some research on Reddit and to talk to other Redditors than to implement this new feature you're working on? So it's really important that you kill your distractions. How do you do that? Well, two tips for you here on how to do this. And I do the first one all the time. 
is to find what it is that you do a lot of, the thing that's taking you away from your work. What is it for you? Is it, is it watching YouTube? Is it commenting on Reddit? Is it spending hours on Facebook? Is it playing games? So think about, first of all, find what it is. And then, for me, it's, it's playing video games. And, and <laughs> so many times in my life, I'm like, oh, hang on a minute, I'm playing this game too much. Most recently, it's been Rocket League. Before that, Fortnite. Before that, PUBG. Games that I just play and I really get into. What I have to do to kill my distraction is uninstall that game and make it a, a commitment not to play it for 30 days. Not just to say, oh, I'm going to play it a little bit less or uh, I'm, I'm going to you know, try not to use it or whatever. You have to uninstall it. You have to actually get it away so that in that moment of weakness where you come across something difficult that you're working on or you've got a bug after bug or you're wrestling with something, you can't figure it out, the temptation is to get there and say, hmm, I might just play a quick game. But if playing a quick game involves a 20 minute download and then an install and messing around, you've got a barrier to doing that. And the other thing in terms of killing your distractions is have two browsers, for example, uh, Chrome and Firefox. And on one of those browsers, you do your goofing around, you're hanging out, your hobby, your whatever it is. That's the, the non-work browser. And on the other browser, you have your work stuff because your browser is your enemy when it comes to distractions because you're going to type something in and maybe you're going to do some research on YouTube and whoop, here's all these other cool YouTube things that we think you should be watching. Or maybe uh, you keep your tabs open when you work. I know a lot of people do that. It's like, oh, here's my Facebook tab and my Reddit tab because I don't want to have to go and open them again. Don't open that browser with those distractions. So kill your distractions and it will super improve your focus, I promise you. Another secret to finishing your game is keeping it simple. This again is really important because when you're a one man studio or maybe you've got three people on your team and maybe you're all unpaid, right? You're going to feel anxious and depressed if you've got this monster of a game that you've got to complete. Don't forget how expensive AAA games are. I have a lot of people reach out to me and say, Thomas, I have this dream of making a game just like Breath of the Wild, or I really want to make a game that's very similar to Fallout. And I'm thinking, don't approach it that way. Those games are millions and millions of dollars with a huge team. One person working on the trees, another person working on the rocks, and another person working on one single enemy type. You have these salaried positions working on very specific things. And you're sitting there thinking, I want to make a game, and I want to do it all. If you're going to make a game solo, or even with a small team, or I guess just an indie game, be really careful and make sure you're keeping things small and simple. What happens is you start your game really excited, okay? And let's say you start your game and you're saying, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to keep it small. When you're a year into the game, you actually get a temptation to complicate your game. And the reason why is because suddenly you've put all this effort and energy into your game. And you're thinking, well... If I'm going to release this game to an audience, I want to make sure that it's perfect. I want to make sure I can release every member of the audience, including people who want things a little bit more complex. So maybe I'll throw some RPG elements in there. And then you're thinking, well, what about people who really like um, voiceover or voice acting in the game? So I'm going to throw in some voice acting here. And so what happens is you have all these unfinished strands in this giant tapestry. So it turns into this big mess. And when you back up and you look at it, you realize there is a ton of content that you actually haven't finished yet. And this is where you have to decide whether you wanna finish your game or whether you wanna quit it. And the temptation is to just quit. So keep everything simple and small. I like to think of indie games as small little diamonds. Okay, these are extremely valuable, um, especially to like people like my wife when I gave her an engagement ring, even though it was tiny, it was incredibly valuable. Your audience should be people who love small games meaningful games um, and that find value in art because that is probably your best approach. So instead of trying to please everyone, you can please that small sliver of an audience, which let's be honest, that small sliver is very profitable. So thanks to Thomas for joining us. Check out his games, check out his channel. There's so much goodness in there where he talks about his indie journey and it's right from the trenches. He's in the middle of working on his game. He's made successful games. He's been making games for a long time. So check out his channel. And if you're interested in having a little bit more structure about finishing your game or finishing any project, you might want to check out my course that I've created on Udemy that's all about how to finish your project. So as always, thanks for joining me and I look forward to seeing you again real soon.